he's been cultivating the image that he is like the philosopher king of the right, you know, that he has all the ideas. And I don't think it's about ideas. For him, what comes first is definitely just throwing down and winning. Today we're going to go through a scene from the film and kind of break it down and see how Bannon operates. No one can ever really have full access, but I had a really good range of his activities. I spent a lot of time not just at his house in D.C., but also in the car rides, on the private plane rides. My goal was not for him to fully see me, but for me to fully see him. Number one, politics is a game to him, and he puts winning above values. A controversial judge running for Senate. I believe in the Second Amendment. Alabama's Roy Moore. He's accused of sexually assaulting a 14-year-old girl years ago. At least nine women accused Moore of wrongdoing. And of course, Steve Bannon is sticking with Roy Moore. When the sexual assault allegations came out against Roy Moore from multiple women, Bannon just didn't back down at all. If anything, his glee in supporting Roy Moore just got louder. Frankly, Bannon maintained that he didn't even believe any of the allegations. He had very little evidence to prove that. It's kind of more about the way he plays the game of politics. And to him, doubling down is the path to victory. And so I think he was able to keep a lot of people in support of Roy Moore. Not because he said, who cares if he did this, but he just blatantly said, I, this didn't happen. The main thing you have to do is support the president and you have to support Trump. Roy Moore's campaign would have looked a lot different and I think the coverage would have looked a lot different if Bannon wasn't supporting him. I think Roy Moore is the guy that's gonna represent uh, Donald Trump and fight the establishment. Number two, he embraces retail politics. The style of politics where you're going to small events, you're meeting people face to face, you know, you're shaking hands, you're having conversations. The Citadel is a military school in South Carolina. This is an annual Republican Society fundraiser, and they are honoring Bannon tonight with a Patriot Award. Hey, how you doing? Gene Carlson. Hey, how you doing? Good to have you with us. Thank you. Hey, man, how you doing? Hey, brother, how you doing? Big no, it's right in the middle. Rose between two thorns. No, right here. Get in the middle. Oh, okay. Rose between two thorns. Right here. Oh, wow. Emma wants a selfie. No, I don't know how to do it. Said, how do we do it? Oh, yeah. Do you take it like that? Sure. sure. You get in the middle. Right here. Right here. Yeah, yeah. We got to get the rose in the middle. Oh, there Come we on. Go. There you go. Perfect. I was constantly surprised in my time with him that so many people wanted to take photos with him. To me, it was just so shocking given what Bannon's reputation was, certainly in on the left. <laughs> and I think that this isn't just about, you know, ego and vanity, but it's also he really does understand that this kind of retail politics and interacting with people face to face has currency. Retail politics was also an effort not just to rally the troops, but to give him a, a name brand as well. I also think that is a, a gateway to listening to what he has to say next, maybe to taking another look at something that he has on Breitbart if you aren't already someone who reads it. I also love this scene because of the, you know, his dad joke about, you know, a rose between two thorns. Right in the middle, rose between two thorns. No, right here, get in the middle. Oh, okay. Rose between two thorns. Right we gotta get the rose in the middle. I'm a different generation than him, but to me it's also this weird thing that like, it was always about the woman in the picture. There's not like a specific malice or anything in it, but to me that's really telling too, the idea like anytime he's in a photo with someone, clearly he's like, oh, who's the woman? Who's the man? Oh, we should put the rose between the two thorns. I don't know if every filmmaker would pick up on that, but I think because of who I am, that was something that kind of struck me as worth including. Number three, he promotes conspiracies. Is it just a coincidence that the Bezos, Amazon, Washington Post did the Billy Bush hit? There are a lot of conspiracy theories that are popular in our politics today. And what I saw was that Bannon does nothing to dispel them and, and often leans into them. When confronted with questions about conspiracies, like George Soros is funding the caravan in Antifa, he's totally willing to traffic in that kind of conspiracy theory. And they did the hit on Judge Moore? Yeah, just a complete random thing in the universe. In private moments, he indicated that he did believe many of them. In the end, it doesn't matter what he does believe or doesn't believe. All that matters is what he does, and he's absolutely willing to let these conspiracy theories blossom if it helps him. 
Bannon, for better or worse, is not only just the authority figure in the room here, he's associated with the highest office in the land. And for him to be promoting these ideas, I think that's clearly damaging to the public. And I think it's the other part of this, which is him encouraging people to distrust the media in general, is very, very dangerous. Number four, he sows doubt in the media and facts. Bezos, Amazon, Washington Post. A big part of his message is to tell his supporters that the media is the opposition party and that they shouldn't trust what they read. And this seems to me like not only one of the most damaging, but really one of the most hypocritical and, you know, potentially outright manipulative. I think this one is so damaging because it's working. Our society is increasingly divided. If you're told, you know, that there's entire sources of information that you just can't trust, which by the way, but sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. I just think that is tearing the fabric of, of society. This idea of Billy Bush weekend. I was there on Billy Bush, Billy Bush weekend. When that video came out. This is the way he refers to the weekend when the Access Hollywood tapes dropped, where you hear Trump talking about, you know, grabbing women by the pussy. And for him, it's Billy Bush weekend. He talks about it as a hit on Trump and there's a hit on Roy Moore. And the hit isn't coming necessarily from political rivals. He ties it to the Jeff Bezos Amazon Washington Post. It's a very pointed way to talk about a website in terms of who owns it. And in this case, it's very much trying to imply a much larger conspiracy. Number five, he creates an in-group identity. From this vantage point where I ended up choosing to shoot the, the whole speech. The atmosphere was like a comedy club. They were really vibing off of the, that language he was using. In the mainstream media, in, 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 in the, in the ma mainstream media, I'd like to thank one of my ex-wives for showing up and... Uh, <laughs> All it is is dabbling in identity and culture, and he's trying to remind them of, we're the ones that had a great victory, you know, when Trump won. And I think you can see how effectively he fostered this we're all one team, we're all in it together kind of feeling in the room when this solitary protester steps up and starts yelling. People are really l vocal, hissing. Bannon himself is just standing quietly. He's got everyone on his side. And I was really shocked at how intensely they were against her. What he does is not just to move on. It's not like to rise above it. It's like a comedian giving it back to a heckler. I'd like to thank one of my ex-wives for showing up and... Uh, <laughs> and uh, I swear I thought that lawyer sent that alimony check. I'll get back to you. He is using a lot of the things in his toolkit to create this in-group identity, to bring people on his side, to use humor, to make them like him. You can see the guy in the bottom left of the screen. He was just like, boy, he's terrific. Like, what a great speaker. He had clearly exceeded whatever his expectations were. Bannon talks a lot in the film about wanting to convert people. I think in here he's, he's winning converts and all of the tools that we have been talking about are part of the recipe <laughs> for that. Creating an in-group identity isn't necessarily on its own a bad thing, but when part of that is promoting conspiracy theories and not minding about promoting hate or assault of women or not believing women or misogyny, when values are secondary to creating that in-group, I think that that's where it gets really dangerous. You got the right for free speech outside. I made this movie with a deep sense of responsibility. People can debate the ways in which he personally has succeeded or failed, but I think what's important to take away is that he's working hard at it, and it's not him alone as a force in the world. He has supporters, he has benefactors, and as much as I'm here breaking down some things you can learn about Bannon, it's more about what we can learn about all of us and where we're headed.